Retirement Daily has been asking ChatGPT questions about retirement and then asking an expert to critique those answers. In our latest installment, we asked ChatGPT how to make tax-efficient withdrawals from your retirement account. And joining us to critique the answer, to tell us what it got right, what it got wrong, and what the material omissions were is Joe Goldgrab from TIAA, who is a wealth management advisor with that firm. Joe, welcome. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate the time. Oh, it's a pleasure. So um, we posed the question, how to make tax efficient withdrawals from your retirement account. You reviewed ChatGPT's answer. We're eager to hear what you think it got right and what it got wrong and what it missed. Yeah, no, uh, you know, ChatGPT is useful in a lot of places. I just think that when it comes to giving financial advice, better to listen to the professionals. I found that what was what they did a nice job of was just summarizing some basic points. But I think the mediocrity was really outweighed by the big mistakes and glaring omissions. And for someone who's looking for comprehensive advice, it was kind of leaving out some major points, some smaller and some bigger points. All right. Before we get to those, what it mentioned a couple things in its response, Roth conversions, tax bracket management, RMDs, withdrawal sequencing, QCDs. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of that stuff seems like it's on target, no? Yeah, uh, those are all very good general topics. You know, uh, talking about Roth conversions, you have to be careful as to what that would do to your tax bracket if you were going to convert some things. Um, required minimum distributions. Uh, you know, that was an example of just not keeping up with the times. I mean, Secure Act 2.0 was passed late last year. Um, was one, one of the things that Congress actually agreed with and got people to push off required minimum distribution to 73. Uh, ChatGPT said you got to take it by 72. So if you're relying on that, you're looking at a lot of people taking unnecessary taxes. Um, yeah. So, you know, yeah. so, something like that was just wrong. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it could be that they're just not keeping up with the most current news and uh, bills that are being passed in Congress. Yeah. So let's go through some of the big omissions about tax strategies that you think uh, ChatGPT missed. Sure. Uh, they got to rename that ChatGPT. It just doesn't flow. I know. It doesn't roll off the tongue, does it? <laughs> <laughs> the, the AI machine. Uh, How's that? <laughs> yeah. So when you talk about the tax strategies, you know, it's important to look at how we shape the inheritance for both uh, a spouse versus a non-spouse beneficiary. You know, there was nothing said, for example, about how retirees should consider a range of strategies for taking their required minimum distributions. Uh, you know, one example was the ability uh, before waiting until 73 to take it, maybe to look to take it out before that. So that way they're not hit up with some large distributions by the time that they do need to take out that amount. And that all depends on what their income uh, bracket's going to be. We also didn't really talk about the ability to push off the required minimum distributions till the April 1st following the year that they turned 73, thereby giving them the ability to, let's say, take two distributions in the year they turned 74. But it's, it's a very personal question, and you need to work with a tax advisor to see where it makes the most sense, maybe break it up among two different tax years. Yeah. Also important to consider if someone's retiring, when should they retire? Should, if they are past 73 and they have that ability, to defer taking out because they're still working, maybe it makes sense to have a retirement date of January 2nd, so you buy yourself another year. Hmm. Uh, what about sort of the sequencing of withdrawals and which accounts you take the money from? Yeah, that, that was also a, you know, a, a, a good question. You know, people always say, well, you know, my retirement is for my retirement and my after-tax money is for my uh, expenses. But you also have to consider what the tax implications are when taking out the funds. When you're taking out monies from the retirement accounts, be it an IRA, a 401k, a 403b plan, you're going to have to pay ordinary income tax. Right? The whole idea is that you've been deferring monies for the last 30, 40, 50 years, and Uncle Sam wants his piece of the pie. And so you're paying whatever your bracket is. It could be 28, 31, 35, 37%, whatever the bracket is. Versus the after-tax monies where you're only going to pay capital gains, if there are gains. And so it's important to have a strategy as to where you're taking those funds um, and what those are, what those investments are. I, I like to say it's not only about 
asset allocation, but asset location. Mm. So it's it, you really need to work to say, oh, well, this stock is going up or that stock's going down. It's much more um, technical and, 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 and difficult to decide where, where what monies to take out first. Yeah. In the critique that you wrote for Retirement Daily, you, you make mention of the fact that ChatGPT doesn't really address uh, how people think about the uh, inherit inheritance. Well, that, that's that, that's a big thing, right? When 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 we talk about how these funds are going to be left to that next generation, there was no mention of the difference between beneficiaries who are spouses versus non-spouses. Mm -hmm. Used to be when somebody was uh, passed away and had retirement monies, they would be able to leave their money to either a child, or, and that child could be a sixty-year-old child. Or their spouse, and they would then take the minimum distributions over their life expectancy, and they always had the ability to take out more. However, they would have to pay ordinary income tax on that. With Secure Act 2.0, that was changed in that the uh, a spouse uh, can take the funds and put it into their name and take the minimum distributions. However, a non-spouse beneficiary must take it out within 10 years and take minimum distributions along those 10 years. And so. Uh, you know, if somebody were to, let's say, inherit uh, $2 million um, and they were a nurse making $150,000, if they're going to take out minimum distributions every year or $2 million, that's going to knock them into a whole other tax bracket. And so there, it's important to have a strategy when you're taking the funds out from an inheritance as to where to take the funds from. And more importantly, before that inheritance even happens. So that it's it's not on the kids who may not be financially savvy to decide where to take the monies from, but that original client sitting down together with their financial planner, with their tax advisor to say, what monies do I want to leave to my kids? What monies do I want to leave to my spouse? And, and what money should I be spending between now and death to leave the funds in the most tax efficient way? Yeah. There are some other things that ChatGPT never mentions, but that you strongly encourage um, listeners to consult with a financial advisor on. Yes. So um, I would say one of the things that didn't come up with the ChatGPT was when we were talking about the uh, qualified charitable distributions. And so for those that are not familiar, you can have, uh, if you have significant minimum distributions, you're a if you do have philanthropic uh, tendencies, you can give up to $100,000 to charities, multiple charities, however you want, up to $100,000. Um, however, um, there is no really mention of that it must come from IRAs, not 401ks. Mm -hmm. And so you might have some people who are listening to this right now that think that they can take out um, monies and have it go to a charity. And, you know, ChatGPT said, if you're charitably inclined, consider making donations from your retirements to qualified charities. That is incorrect. It cannot come from a 401k or a 403b. It must come from an IRA. And so what people may want to do is move monies from 401ks or 403b plans to IRAs prior to the years they're going to want to have these qualified charitable distributions made or else they're not going to be able to do it in that tax year. So I don't want to steal your thunder, but you had a pretty good bottom line in terms of your assessment. Uh, care, to, uh, yeah. care to give it to us? <laughs> you know, I, I think ChatGPT could be useful. I think, you know, sometimes people are realizing that it, it, it could be dangerous. But I really think that, you know, ChatGPT is great for writing jokes or wedding toasts, but really speak with the financial professional about taking withdrawals by your retirement account. Joe, uh, I want to thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us. It's uh, greatly appreciated. <laughs> My pleasure.